Welcome to this Easy 11 Plus short lesson on working with time differences. If it's useful, remember to like and subscribe, and don't forget that my live lessons are every Tuesday evening at six o'clock in this channel. Let's get started. Here we've got a question about Raphael's morning routine. I'm not gonna read the whole thing out, so I suggest that you pause the video at this point and take a moment to read the question before we go any further. Now, the first thing I want to do with this is look through and spot things that we can ignore because there's a lot of information here and it's quite likely that not all of it will be essential. So one thing you might notice is that Raphael actually boils his kettle while he's making his porridge. Now questions like this don't really live in the real world. Of course, it wouldn't really be possible to start your porridge mixture at the exact same time that you start the kettle, just as it wouldn't be possible to wake up and immediately be making your breakfast without even traveling from one room to another. However, you have to take things on the terms in which they are given to you. And that's the world of this question. So we can get rid of everything about the kettle because if you've read this carefully, you'll see that nothing to do with the kettle adds any time because it always goes on while other things are happening, yet takes less time than them. So the kettle and the porridge happen simultaneously, but the kettle is quicker. The other thing we can see is that Raphael gets to work 54 minutes after finishing breakfast. So all this time spent getting ready to go out is actually already included in that 54 minutes. So we can get rid of this as well. And now we've got the key information that we actually need to work with without any extra things in there to confuse us. So we need to find out when he woke up working backwards from the time when he got to work. So let's start with that time, 9.06 in the morning. And we can see that this is 54 minutes after the time when he finished his breakfast. So if you want to minus 54 minutes, probably the easiest way to do it is minus an hour, which is 60 minutes, and then add six minutes back on. And we've now dealt with this. It takes him eight minutes to eat his porridge and drink his tea. And it takes him six minutes to cook his porridge. It takes him two minutes to put his porridge mixture together and he lay in bed for six minutes before this. And there we have it. Raphael woke up at 7.50 or 10 to eight in the morning. When you write your answer, it's a very good idea to put AM or PM just so that you don't leave any doubt at all and risk losing a mark. So to summarize, pay careful attention to the things that are irrelevant, things that happen at the same time as other things in this case, so that you don't double count those bits of time. Then work very carefully, step by step, adding or subtracting each event one at a time, and then you will reliably get to the correct answer. Let's apply the same sort of approach to this question. So we start at 11.42 p.m. And we need to add, to start with, seven hours onto that. So six hours later would be 5.42 in the morning, so seven hours later is 6.42. You could do one hour and then six hours if you wanted to break it down further. And now we've got 42 minutes to add, but that could be a little bit confusing. So let's break that down as well. So we can treat this as 20 minutes and then 22 minutes. And then 22 minutes. And again, don't forget the AM or PM so that you don't lose a mark for your answer. You can break these times down in whatever way feels comfortable for you. The important thing is to do it in reasonably small steps so that you don't make mistakes along the way. So here we've got a question about driving from Paris in France to Ulaanbaatar in Mongolia, which is quite a long way. Now, as we can see, there's a difference in time zones. So we can't work out the time that this takes if we're working with two times that belong to different time zones. Instead, I think it makes sense to start off by putting the times that we have in this question into the same form, either Paris time or Ulaanbaatar time. Let's deal with Paris time so that we're still leaving at 7.10 a.m. So in that case, the 7.20 p.m. arrival time in Ulaanbaatar needs to be adjusted. So we see that Ulaanbaatar is seven hours ahead of Paris. And crucially, it says when it's 8 a.m. in Paris, it's 3 p.m. in Ulaanbaatar. We need to take the Ulaanbaatar time and take away seven hours. So if in Ulaanbaatar it's 7.20 p.m. and we need to subtract seven hours, we of course get 
12.20 in the afternoon, so just after midday. And that tells us what that time is in Paris time. So now we're trying to get from 7.10 a.m. on the 13th of January to 12.20 p.m. on the 3rd of February. Now let's stick to writing in 24 hour time so we don't need to worry too much about the AMs and PMs. Getting from the 13th of January to the 3rd of February is a little bit tricky. Let's get to the end of January first. So 30 days hath September, April, June and November. All the rest have 31 except for February which has 28 or 29 on a leap year. So we can see that January is a 31 day month. So let's get to the 31st of January. We're aiming for the same time of day on the 31st of January, so we just have to deal with days at this point. The 13th of January to the 31st of January, we can just subtract this, it's 18 days. And now we want to get to the 3rd of February. Again, the same time of day. So now we're on the right day, but we need to get from 7.10 to 12.20. So let's get from 7.10 to 12.10. And that, of course, is 5 hours. If you can visualise a clock face, it becomes quite easy. Or you can do 12 minus 7 is 5. Either works fine here. And now we need to get to 12.20, which, of course, is 10 minutes. Adding this all together, we have 21 days, 5 hours, and 10 minutes. And it's as easy as that. You just have to work carefully, stepwise. Now, the other way you could do this is that you could work it out using the Paris time to the Ulamatar time and find the difference and then adjust the difference using the seven hours adjustment that we used at the start. Either approach is absolutely fine. Here we got a question about a train journey from Hamburg to Bautzen and because there's no mention of a time difference you can assume that Hamburg and Bautzen are in the same time zone even though they're in different countries. This question is a good example of why using ordinary adding or subtracting can get you into a real tangle here. Would you do 749 minus 2026 or 749 minus 826? Either way you're going to get a negative answer. Do you do 2026 minus 749 but then you're working the wrong way? What's more minutes are out of 60 whereas hours come in groups of 12 or 24. So if you get into a situation where when adding or subtracting you have to carry from the minutes section into the hours section you're going to end up with a complete mess and a totally wrong answer. That's one of the reasons why it's so useful to approach these questions by counting stepwise in the way that I've been explaining. So let's have a look at this. We start at 2026, so 8.26 in the evening. Let's get through to 26 minutes past midnight and then we can just count up rather than having to go over the switch from 23.59 to 0000. So getting from 26 minutes past 8 to 26 minutes past midnight is just a matter of travelling for 4 hours. So let's keep going in this way. Let's get to 26 minutes past 7, which is almost our arrival time. And of course, that's 7 hours. Now we just need to get to 7.49. So getting from 26 minutes to 49 minutes is just a matter of another 23 minutes. Adding that together, we simply have 11 hours and 23 minutes. It's as simple as that. Now because this question isn't especially complicated, let's imagine that your answer had been something like 11 hours and 84 minutes. And you might be really tempted after adding all that up just to go, great, I found the answer, underline, move on to the next one. But 11 hours and 84 minutes is a little bit strange. Can you see why? Of course, it's because there are only 60 minutes in an hour. So if you had something like this, you should think of it as 11 hours and 60 minutes and 24 minutes, which of course would give 12 hours and 24 minutes. But that isn't the answer to this question. It's just a side example. On to the next. Here we've got a nice map to look at. And actually it's quite interesting because if you consider that Vladivostok here is over in Russia and that Russia also extends right the way over here around St. Petersburg, you can get a sense of quite how enormous this country is. Vladivostok is further east than India, it's further east than China, it's virtually level with Japan. Russia is a country of extraordinary size and so we've got this enormous journey here all the way across. And it isn't surprising that it takes 
more than a week. Eight days, 13 hours, and 42 minutes. And we've also got a time difference to deal with here. Quite a big time difference because of the distance that we're covering here on this journey. As I mentioned earlier, you can adjust your times to take account of a time difference either at the beginning or at the end of your working. This time, let's do it at the end, just to be a little bit different. So we start at 12.30 p.m. on Saturday. We get to Vladivostok eight days, 13 hours and 42 minutes later. So let's handle the days first. Of course, seven days would take us to the same time on the same day of the week, just a week later. So eight days takes us to one day further than that. So this is going to be 12.30 p.m. on Sunday. Now we've got 13 hours to deal with. So let's break that down into one hour and 12 hours. So one hour takes us to 1.30 p.m. on Sunday. We're clearly using the 24 hour clock now, so I'm not gonna worry about AMs and PMs. We've got another 12 hours to add on here to make 13 hours. So notice that if we add 12 hours to 1.30 p.m. on Sunday, we get to 1.30 a.m. on the next day, Monday. And now we've got 42 minutes to add. And I think we can do this in one step because 42 minutes is clearly 30 minutes and another 12 minutes. And from this we can see that 2.12 a.m. is the time when we arrive. However, we are still in Nice time. And the question wants us to give our answer in Vladivostok's local time. We've learned from the question that Vladivostok is eight hours ahead of Nice. So when it's midnight in Nice, it's 8 a.m. in Vladivostok. So if it's 12 past 2 in the morning in Nice, it's going to be 12 past 10 in the morning in Vladivostok. Notice that it's important to put a.m. because when you write something like 10, 12, it isn't clear whether you're working in the 24 hour clock or the 12 hour clock. Is this our answer? Not quite, because we also have to indicate which day of the week we're talking about. Always be careful to check back at the question and make sure that you haven't missed anything. And of course, we can see from our working that the day of the week is Monday. And that's it. There isn't anything too crazy in this lesson, anything too complicated. It's just a simple stepwise method for approaching quite a common variety of 11 plus exam question. If that was useful, please remember to like and subscribe, and please take a moment to look at the various links in the video description, which will take you to lots of useful resources, including some free things. I look forward to seeing you next Tuesday evening at six o'clock for my next Easy 11 Plus live lesson, and you might like to take a few minutes to look around the other videos on the Easy 11 Plus channel. Bye-bye.